Now that we've got our composition all ready to go, now I'm going to go over my lines with a black colored pencil. This is different than the ebony colored pencil. We didn't use a black colored pencil to transfer with because there is wax in the colored pencil and it wouldn't transfer well. Now if I mess up I can still erase this colored pencil. Just want to make sure that my lines are nice and bold. I'm not going to shade things in now though. If I, I'm, You're not going to shade anything in right now. Right now all you're doing is lines and shapes, not values. Don't do your values yet. So I cover all those lines and then I would be ready to paint. Now that I have all my lines covered, now I'm going to start painting my piece. And here are your watercolor pencils. Remember that your watercolor container should have no empty spots. You need to check that when you get it. So let's look at let's look at the leaves first. I'm going to use yellow, light green, which is the yellow green, uh, the regular green, the dark, the plain green, and I also want to use just a little bit of blue. Now before I even get started, I want to make sure that my colored pencils are sharp. And when they get dull, I've got to stop and make those sharp again. So I'm going to look at where I feel like the light would be hitting. So the light would hit at the top of this leaf here, but under here, it would, the light wouldn't be hitting there. That should be a little bit darker. The light would hit down here and typically through the center of the leaf. And I'm drawing on textures and lines but I'm not shading in the whole thing. I'm really focusing on textures. Now this is a really wide leaf, so I'm going to put in a few of those yellow lines. You want to start with your lightest color. This is a leaf back here. If you get confused, you're like, mm, I don't know what's a leaf and what's a, a flower, then you, maybe you need to look at your original drawing. That's up to you, artist. You have to decide that. Then I'm going to come in with my green and outline. Actually, I want to go in with my darker green around the outline. Oh, you do need to press kind of hard, but I broke my pencil. Whoopsie daisy. Sharpen that again. Have your sharpener handy. Remember, there's a trash can in between your desk, so you can th just throw that away. Just keep a little pile of shavings and throw that away. And that is a little bit of a pain with watercolor pencils. You kind of need to keep sharpening those. And go over the outside. Let's sort of stop and look. Make sure that I'm not just, oh, I did it again. Make sure that I'm not putting the color where it it doesn't belong. If I just go on autopilot, then I might put the color in the wrong spot. I don't want to do that. Now these type of leaves are so wide that I'm going to put several of these lines and I'm not going to just make them random. They're going with the contour, the outside shape of this leaf. So I'm making them go the same direction as the outside lines, the contour lines of the leaf. Put some more lines in here. Remember, I'm not shading it in. I'm creating texture with my colored pencil, my watercolor pencil. Not shading in. There are some times when I will want a saturation of color, and I might lightly put some color in and then put some more texture on top of it. But really think about these aren't just like plain pencils. These are watercolor pencils. And then I'm going to put a little bit of blue in here. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. Because this is underneath, so that's going to be a little bit darker there. This leaf is in front of this leaf, so the one behind. Just put a little bit of blue in through there. Not a whole lot. Really looking at the contour of my lines, the direction my lines are going. I'm going to put a little bit blue 
behind this leaf here. When I've got one leaf behind the other one, I'm going to darken it just a little bit behind, put a little bit darker in the leaf behind. Let's see. And then I need some green on my stem. I already have some yellow on there. I'm going to just put a little green. Just a little few more lines in there over that blue to make sure that's not like bright, 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 bright blue. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and paint this part because I want it dry before I put color on this because this is going to be black and blue and purple and I don't want purple on my leaf. My flowers, I can make these three flowers three different colors because they're three different plants. But if it's one plant, then it'll look funny if you got three different colors on that one plant. So I'm going to go ahead and paint my leaf. And notice that I'm not going back and forth. Right here I want to blend a little bit. But for the most part, I'm just lightly laying down color. Or actually laying down water. Now here on my stem. I'm just going to take one stroke, and that's it. I'm not going back over that again. Here I've got the blue. I'm going to just blend it a little bit. Take a main paintbrush back and forth just a little bit, not much. Blend that in. And we blend and blend, then we blend it. This is just a single line. And notice how it's filling this space with green. Even though I didn't put green over the whole thing, it's still spreading that out and I can still see my texture. I want to get enough water on there, but I don't want so much that I lose control. Now around my bug, I want to be careful that I don't get the green. I don't want a green bug. I don't want that bug green. And I want to use contrast, so I want my bug to stand out. Maybe I had to think about, do I want in black? I don't know if I want in black. Complementary color of green is red. Maybe I want him red and purple. Then he'll really stand out. Scare beetles are not red and purple, but you have artistic license, and you can make things pretty much whatever color you want as long as it reads as the correct object. So I wouldn't make my leaves purple. That doesn't really work. That's not really going to read as a leaf. And then I just give this a minute to cool or to dry off. And then I can start on my next object. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn it around, let that dry, and I'm going to come up here and work on this flower right here. And I think I want this flower to be orange, with a little bit of pink and red in it. And I'm going to start by putting the red around the outside. And sometimes you can get tulips that are variegated. Actually considered, well, it's technically, if you have variegated, it means that you've got more than one color. And it's actually a, a fungus or a, a something that, is wrong with the tulips that causes them to do that but it's very desired people really like the the tulips that have more than one color so I'm not I'm not doing a whole lot I'm not like going over it like shh. I'm going with the direction of the lines and I put the red in and then I put the the orange just kind of zigzagging into it, blending it, not entirely, but just sort of right up next to it, and then I'm going to put the yellow on the tip, but I want it to be orange, so now I'm going to go over with some lines, going the direction of my flower shape with the pink, and let's see what that looks like. Now, watercolors are intended, really, where's my paintbrush, I just had it. Watercolors are, are intended to add layers. So once I get this painted, I let it dry, I might come back the next day and make it a little bit darker, add more watercolors to it. Could also add mixed media, which would be like maybe plain watercolors added to it. 
actually kind of got that a little bit more than I wanted. So I'm going to take a tissue before it dries and I'm going to dab that out. And I actually like that better when I dab it out. So now I can see the texture and it's still colored. The whole thing is still colored, but I see texture in it now. For my web, I'm going to leave my web alone. And I'm going to come back the very last day and I'm going to go over that. Either I could just leave it with the black colored pencil, just leave it like that, or I could take a silver colored pencil and make it a little bit shimmery. Okay, my spider. I'm not sure what kind of spider this is, honestly. But if it reads as a spider, cool. I'm going to make it, I think, and I could be totally wrong, I think a Black Widow. No, Black Widow has a diamond on her back. I don't know, but I feel like giving her red there, so I am. And I'm going to make her purple. And I'm going to make her, first of all, I'm going to go around the outside edge of my insect. All the lines that make that object all the shapes with the purple. Then I'm going to come in with, I'm going to be really careful when I use black. Black, when you use black with watercolors, is typically going to turn, it, it's going to turn gray because you're adding water to it. I'm going to come back and add more to her later, but right now I just want to get a base on there and then I'll, I'll figure out later where I want the blue and I really probably need a smaller paintbrush than this and sometimes you don't need like if it's just a line maybe I don't need to put in any water at all on that I could just leave it let's see now you can use the watercolor pencil on wet paper. So I'm going to just lightly come in on the wet paper and just do a few little lines here. Some texture, kind of like giving little dots or making her look a little hairy. Now I want to make sure that I don't lose this round form in there. You'll notice it goes on smoother when your paper is wet. Not really sure what what else I want to do to that. So I'm going to leave that alone. I'll come back to that later. Oh, that looks pretty good up there. I might, with the green behind it, might work just fine. Not sure yet. All right. I'm going to think about my beetle. I don't know. This is dry now, so now I'm going to work on these. And I still have to decide what color I want him. I think I'm going to go with really, really bold on him. Now remember, if you're doing leaves, leaves need to be green. If you want them to look like they're dead, you can use a little brown. But don't make your leaves red. It'll just look like a weird, long, skinny flower. Your insects, you can use a little bit more liberty with those. So I, the dung beetle is black so typically it would be like black with a little purple but I wanted to really stand out and the complementary color of green is red so I'm going to use red but I'm also going to use a little pink which is just a high key value of red and I'm going to use purple and I might decide I want to come back in later with a little bit of brown but or a little bit of blue but I'm going to see because remember on colored pencils you want to layer. So I'm going to do a layer. I'm going to let it I'm going to get it wet. I'm going to let it dry and then I'll come back and see if I need to add some more color to that. So on the highlights, the areas that are higher, I'm putting a little bit of pink. And I'm using curved lines cuz I want to make those look like they're curved. And this is really small. I'm just going to put like a little bit of pink, just a line down there. A little pink there. A little bit of pink. 
and I really want to bring up textures, then I'm going to see. I'm going to put purple, or I think I'll put purple. Put a few curved lines of purple next to, kind of intermingling a little bit with the pink, but I'm not just like, I'm not shading it all in. I'm adding texture and dimension with it. And a little bit there and there. One line, I'll just put one line. And if you're really, really perplexed, like, I don't know what to do to this thing, then you could take your preliminary sketch and use the watercolor pencils on that and just practice and see what do I want. Ooh, red eyes are cool. I'm going to give them red eyes. And you've got scratch paper on your desk. If you decide that you need to do a little practicing with your watercolors before you actually put it on, you can do that. Now, remember I told you the red is really intense. The red paper that you have, you might want to lightly, very, very lightly, before you start painting or before you start putting the watercolor pencils on, you might want to try very, very lightly, very, very carefully using a small eraser and erasing some of that red paint out inside your shapes. Not in the background, but like in the shapes themselves. Because that's a little hard to cover up. Alright. Pretty anxious to see what this is going to look like. Doing, I have to remind myself sometimes minimal lines. I can only add watercolor. I cannot take watercolor away. If I put something on there that doesn't belong there, that's just too bad. And then I'm going to carefully come in. Remember, I'm not adding a lot. I'm not, I'm not going back and forth over a lot. I might kind of dab it a little bit and blend it. But I'm really just lightly going over so that I still have my texture. Still have those lines in there. If I want to blend some colors in lightly, I can kind of dab my pencil on there, but I'm not putting a whole lot on. Um, I feel like I need it to be a little bit red over here. I can go ahead on top of my water. I've got that wet already. I can go ahead and add a little bit more red in there. Let's see what that looks like. That's a little better. Now, you don't have to add water to all the areas. There might be some areas that are very delicate that you might just want to leave with just the, the pencil marks and not the paintbrush on top of it. So like these little places, places there, either I need a really, really small paintbrush and I can, I'll come back and look at that a little bit later. Now, I think I'd like to dab out on the tips, on the highest point of the bug. I'm going to dab it out just a little bit. See if I can round that out a little bit more. I think that stands out pretty good. Okay, now I've got red here and violet. At the top I've got red and orange and yellow. So maybe I'll make one of these a yellow flower. Maybe one of these a... I don't see too many blue tulips. If you want to make a blue tulip, that's fine with me. Let's see, I'm going to make this one work. Uh, no, wait, what did I say? Pink. I want it, this one pink. So I'm going to make it predominantly pink. I'm going to go over my edges. and I'm, I am pressing fairly hard. Now this is a curved shape here, so I'm going to add some curved lines starting at the edge and out. Curve those lines around so it makes it round out my object. And I want this one to be pretty intensely pink. So I've got my texture on now. Now I'm going to lightly go over with the side of my pencil with the pink. And I'm going to need some highlight and some low light. So I'm going to let the pink be my highlight. And now I'm going to go back in with my red and just lightly go over a few of the places where I want it to curve around, look like it's maybe a little bit in shadow, and cross hatch those lines through there. Remember cross hatching is going one direction 
And then I'm going to use a different color for this one and go another direction. That's cross hatching. That blends those colors nicely and gives me a good texture there. So let's see what that looks like. Lightly paint that in. And if I want to add a little bit more dimension to it, I can come back in with a different color or more of the same. I'm noticing that my stem didn't go all the way to that pink flower, so I'm just going to add a little bit more. Now here, I want this to look like this stem is, a, it is, this stem is in front of those leaves. So I'm going to bring that out a little bit by putting the yellow on there, and I'm going to put that yellow on there pretty dark. This is all dry now. If you overwork this paper, you can rip it, so be careful not to overwork it. And then I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little bit darker green right behind those stems just to shade it in a little bit to make that leaf, or that stem pop out in front of those leaves. And a teeny, teeny, teeny little bit of blue. I did a line down there and just a teeny little bit of cross hatching behind that. And then I'm going to use my water, see what that looks like. Now it's a little bit darker now, so it's really popping out this stem in front of it. And then I want to blend those colors up a little bit. Blend. And then you blend it. And then you blend and blend and blend and blend. And then you blend, 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 blend. Still keeping in mind that my flower, or my leaf here, needs to go up and down. I'm going to put just a little bit of blue behind this. So I have a little shading. Don't ever use black for shading. Black, it's not really, it doesn't work. Okay. Okay, for my leaves at the top, I need to sharpen again. And I remember when you drop pencils, the lead inside breaks. So when you sharpen a pencil and the lead comes out, that means somebody has dropped that pencil. And the watercolor pencils are kind of stupid expensive. You can spend an enormous amount on art supplies. How much? Um, and um, I think these watercolor pencils are probably a dollar or two a piece. Alright, so I'm going to start. Oh, I want to start with my yellow. Start with my highlight areas first. My highest key value. And yellow is always going to be my highest key value. Then I'm going to put some textures for the lines. And you really want to be mindful. I could get a little bit confused here if I'm not careful. Figuring out what is... I'm going to go ahead and outline these with green so that I know what is actually my leaf and what is like part of the web. I, if you're not careful, you get confused and you'll color a flower green and it's just going to look like a really weird leaf. So I'm going to outline these so I can figure out, make sure I don't get confused. Because I do get confused sometimes. Alright, and then put some texture. Remember going with the outside edge. That's the contour of the leaf. I'm not just randomly putting lines in there. I'm going with the shape of the leaf. Making lines, not shading it in. I don't want to shade this one in. I don't want the whole thing yellow. I want, I want to see where the variation of colors are. And then green, put some green in there, some lines, and then the way that I did down here, I did that dark blue around, around the edges to kind of bring that out. I'm going to go ahead and do that now too. Contour lines. Don't forget this. And when you're just doing textures, you really do need to kind of press hard. When you're shading in, you're going to use the side of your pencil lightly. But when you're doing textures, you want to try to shade those in a little bit better. Or press it in a little bit harder. So this, I want this to be in front of that. So I'm really going to come in with that yellow, pretty 
pretty hard on that stem. I really want that stem to show up. And then I'm going to bring a little bit of blue. It's going to kind of go dark to light because I'm going to lift up on my pencil as I get to the edge. And this leaf is behind this leaf, so I'm not going to put any blue on that one. I'm going to put the blue on the leaf behind it to make it give it some dimension. Just a little bit around that stem. And then I'm going to come back with some more green. <clears throat> I'm going to come in some more green so that I don't have a blue leaf, but a blue-green. I want to make sure I've got blue-green, not blue. Okay. And then the other color by adding the plain white water. Totally clear water. <coughs> And I'm going to blend, blend, see over oh, nice. Not a lot of blending, just a teeny little bit. I just brush it. See, I brush it, brush, brush. And I'm going to go to my other blue spot. And then I'm going to rinse this out before I go to the areas that are lighter. Because I don't want that to get dark in the areas that should be light. Rinsed it out, got a little bit more water lightly. Now this is not watercolor paper. So watercolor paper is a little bit more forgiving. This is poster board paper. So you really can't get it soaking wet. You get one area painted, you let it dry, you come back to it. Don't overwork it. I'm going to rinse that out. Get this piece. And I blend, I blend, and I blend it. And I think that blue worked pretty well because it's really creating some dimension. This leaf is definitely in front of, this leaf is in front of that leaf. That's definitely creating some dimension. Okay, my last flower and I am almost done. After I'm all finished, I'm going to come back and see if there's any places I want to expand on. Because remember, watercolors are meant to be layered. Watercolors are not meant to be done in one sitting. They, they're, you plan on layering them. So if I make that yellow, I don't know if it's going to draw a lot of attention down there or if it's going to play off the yellow up here. If I make it purple, it'll play off that purple up there and bring out a little bit of purple there. I am going to make it predominantly purple. So I'm going to use the pink for a little bit of highlight, but I'm not going to make it predominantly pink. I'm going to make it predominantly purple. So first I'm going to go over fairly hard, press fairly hard with my pencil, my purple, my violet, a dirty violet violet. Then I'm going to lightly go over the edge. I'm going to go right over the whole shape. And I'm going to come in and add some curved lines to make this flower round out so it's not quite so flat. And then my blue, I'm going to come in with my blue, analogous color of violet is blue. And I can use the pink on here too because, and I think I'm, I'm going to save the pink. I'm going to wait. I may not need that. But I could use the pink because it's a high key value of red, which is an analogous color to violet. Alright, I might want to come back and add some more, but remember, I can't take it away. All I can do is add, so I'm just going to go lightly in with that. And go the direction that that flower would be curving, and just blend it in. And I am not sure how I feel about that, so I'm going to just let that sit, and I will come back to that later and see what I think about it. I think actually looking at my bug up here, um, you know what, I am. I'm going to add some more purple while it is wet, and I want it more purple. I do. I want it more purple. But if I paint the whole thing exactly the same shade, 
of purple. Then it's going to start to disappear. It's starting to flatten out a little bit. I do think I need some highlight areas. Now I have my first layer of paint over everything and I need to go back now and see do I need to add some more dimension. So let me take a look at this. The blue that I put here, it seems to be a little abrupt. So I want to smooth that out a little bit and now I'm going to do some cross hatching in this area here. I want to add a little bit more green and a little bit more blue so that it blends more like it did up here and it really pops out this stem instead of just looking like a bunch of blue lines. So now, remember I told you to go with the grain for your texture, but now I want to add some shading. So now I'm actually going to cross hatch. Remember cross hatching? Go one direction and then another direction and that helps you blend colors together and shade. So I'm going to go and actually outline this so I can get a nice crisp line from this way out. Then I'm going to uh, do a little shading here with cross hatching and go over that blue edge a little bit and cross hatch the other direction with the blue. And I want to make it a little bit, not I don't want to make it a straight line, I'm going to make it a little bit uneven. So now a little bit of the green, I'm going to take that green over the edge too. Because again, I don't want it to be a blue, I want it to be blue green. And I want to slowly blend that out. I'm careful not to get any green on my pink and purple bug. Because green added to red, and pink is a high key value of red, will make brown. A really ugly baby poo brown. And I don't want that. I don't want it to be brown. So just a little bit more blending over here. I'm going to do a line here and a line there so that when I blend We'll take that color and make a nice sharp edge. And do a little cross hatching on this direction here. Blend that out. Want that to be a nice gradual change. And I think actually this whole area could use a little bit of cross hatching to make this whole area just a little bit darker behind this leaf, because when one leaf is in front of another leaf, it's going to shade it a little bit. Put a little bit of high key value, my yellow in through there. A little bit of blue to blend out, and then see what that looks like with my paintbrush. Notice I have a pretty small paintbrush here. I want it when I get my brush wet, then I want to try to get those bristles to come in. Some of them are like little flyaway hairs. And as I tap my paintbrush on my cup to get a little bit of the water out, I don't want all of it out. And I'm not going to go over this part or this part or this part right now. I want to get this darker. And I want to blend a little bit more this time. So I'm trying to get some shading in there. And this is the second time I've gone over this same spot. Watercolors are not meant to be used in one single sitting. You need to use layers with watercolor because you cannot take watercolor off. You can't take it off, you can't take it off, you can't take it off. Did I say you can't take it off? Because you can't take it off. All you can do is add more color. So if I get it too dark and it dries, um, uh, that's too bad. Really careful around my little pink guy. A smaller brush would probably be very handy now. And try to blend that in so it's not a really abrupt change. Gradual change. And I think I have a pretty good contra- oh, down here. I need a little bit more blending in through here. All right, now I think this is done. Now the very last thing that you can do is you can come back and you can use on top of all of this, you could use either more color pencils that you don't bleed in, that you don't blend in, or if we have time, we can add plain colored pencils 
and or metallic colored pencils. So I'm going to use a silver metallic colored pencil and I won't get these out until we're all done. If it takes us too long to get this part then we don't bring these out. We're not going to get to these. And I'm going to go over. I want my my web, I want it to be shimmery. So I'm going to go over those lines with a silver metallic pencil. This is not a watercolor pencil, although you can get metallic watercolor pencils. I did get some last year to try them out and the colors are very dull. It, I'm not at all impressed with those, but I do like just the regular metallic colored pencils and that's going to give it a nice little shiny ethereal kind of feeling. One of the hardest things as an artist is to figure out when you're done with something. And the final step is to put my signature on the bottom. And my signature is finger. And then I date it. Ta-da! Oh, it's beautiful. And now I am ready to write my story about my political painting.